name, Tyler Buckner. Now, it's not a shock he entered the transfer portal. Um, he entered the transfer portal after the spring game because it just looked like he was not going to be making the starting position that he thought he was going to be able to be there. He tried to stay there and compete at Notre Dame, but it just wasn't going to work out. He could tell, see the writing on the wall um, while he was at Notre Dame during the spring game. But when he entered the transfer, but then he entered the transfer portal. Now, when you enter the transfer portal, there's essentially a no, do not disturb, do not contact because you already kind of know where you're going to visit, where you're going to go. Well, he went to Alabama. He had a visit with Alabama. Now, he went to Alabama because his former offensive coordinator, Tommy Reese, is now the offensive coordinator at Alabama. Now, a lot of people did not expect what was about to transpire to come to this. I was one of the people that said, this does not mean he's going to go to Alabama because Alabama is having a quarterback battle of their own with Ty Simpson and Jay and Monroe. They were having their quarterback battle. If you watched the spring game, you could tell there wasn't really no clear runner. I, I am on record to say that if they were going to start somebody, it'd be Monroe because he has more starting. Um, he has more starting time. He's the more athletic quarterback with what they may try to want to do on offense. He can, he could bring that type of Justin Fields esque like he brought to the Bears. Where in college it's a little different. If he can make some big time runs, they can hand the ball off to their great running back. This big room of running backs that they have at Alabama, and the wide receiver group that they have at Alabama. That's all he needs to do: make short throws, get the playmakers the ball, get out of the way. At run the ball once in a while, run a zone read and take off a power read, and he can take off. And well, knowing that you have a quarterback behind him, that if God forbid an injury happens, that you have a guy to come in and be able to throw the ball. I retweeted this and I said, This does not mean he's going to Alabama. I just didn't see it because you have a quarterback battle going on there. I don't see Tyler Buchanan as a guy that's going to come in. But then he posted that he has now transferred and committed to Alabama. So this means a couple things. One, that quarterback battle is not going as well as they thought. Two, maybe because Tommy Reese went to bat to Nick Saban for him and said, this is a guy that I could bring in that understands my offense because he was around it the year before, even though lack of playing time. We're in that position no matter what with lack of playing time. Bring a guy in that understands the play calling, that understands how I want to call the game, and as a guy that can handle the game, handing the ball off, just do the things that we need to do. So there was something there that caught Nick Saban's eye that pushed this over the edge. I am incredibly shocked that this happened. Does this mean that Alabama is in a bad spot? I don't think so. And the reason why I say this is because Alabama, for the past couple of years, they, they've had a guy that could throw the ball three or 400 yards a game. And that's kind of what they needed to win games. But if you actually sat there and watched the spring game, the receivers they have are going to get open, not necessarily deep, not necessarily these big time just go routes or all these white crosses they used to do when Smith was the wide receiver there. Alabama's going to be that team that they were a couple years ago or a few years ago. You just need a guy to not make mistakes. You need a quarterback that's not going to go in and throw interceptions. You need a quarterback that can get the ball where it needs to be in a short passing game. You need a guy just to churn and hand the ball off. Just churn and hand the ball off. Get them in the right spots. Be smart and make good decisions. Alabama's going to rely on running the football a lot this year. I, I I think that's where they're going. And I think Nick Saban knew that ahead of time, and that's why he was able to lure Tommy Reese. Because even though Tommy Reese is going to call Nick Saban's system offense, I think he understood Let's bring a guy in that understands how to make play calls to run the football, play action it. Not quite go under center, but I think that's this is showing why Tommy Reese was hired because that was another question. Why is Tommy Reese hired as the offensive coordinator? What has he necessarily proven? I mean, he's called some good games for Notre Dame, but Notre Dame recruits different. 
They get more tight ends. They get more under center. They do a lot more dive plays. This is, I think, showing why Tommy Reese is hired as an offensive coordinator, bringing in this quarterback to try to push Monroe and Simpson. I think just make it more competitive there. And so I don't think Alabama's in a weak spot. I'm not saying they're going to win at all. I'm not saying they're going to lose five games either. People think they're going to, people think Alabama's about to go seven and five. That's what they think. And to, to those people, I would say go watch that spring game again because on defense, they have a great secondary. They have really good receivers. They have really good running backs. And they have better linemen, I think, this year than last year. And so if you could just get a quarterback in there to not make mistakes and not overdo it, and you don't need them to throw three or 400 yards a game to win games, I think that's what you're going to need this year. And if that quarterback, whoever it is, gets some confidence that they're going to do well. But this is a weird position we've never seen. We've never seen for the past couple of years Alabama be this quite underdog. We've never seen Alabama look, quote-unquote, vulnerable in this spot because they've always had a quarterback to rely on. They've always had something. I still think they're going to do well this year. Obviously, I have an Alabama thing behind me. I'm a big Nick Saban fan. But I do think that we're not going to quite see the same type of offense we've come accustomed to seeing right off the bat until the quarterback situation gets comfortable. But I think bringing this guy in is just telling the other quarterbacks, hey, hey, we're serious. Like We need to win now. The spring game didn't do enough. You guys are still here. You didn't enter the transfer portal. Guess what? You need to work hard. You need to get better. And we're serious. We're going to bring a guy in that understands our offensive coordinator And so if you don't get your act together, you're not going to be here long. You're not going to play long. So I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, but it's, it's quite something to keep an eye on. When we already had a quarterback battle, now you're bringing another guy in. And Tyler Buchanan is not going to leave a place where he's a backup, go somewhere, and be a backup. So something was said to him or talked about where he has an opportunity because maybe they haven't named a starter. Maybe they told him that saying, Hey, we don't have a starter yet. So you have the opportunity to come in. Maybe at Notre Dame, he was told, Hey, you're not going to start. And that's why he left. But it is the, the, the most shocking part is how quickly this happened and that it was Alabama. It wasn't that he went to Alabama, went somewhere else because I think there's other schools he could have went to and maybe started right away. Auburn needs a quarterback. He could have looked at Florida. He could have went, to other places that would make more sense to have a starting quarterback. But so something was said between, you know, Tommy Reese or Nick Saban to him that he could really become the starter. So we need to watch what's happening in Alabama throughout the summer. And as we get to fall camp, what's really going on here and who the starting quarterback is going to be and keep, and keep on the lookout to see if somebody enters change for portal as this wraps up. But I doubt anybody leaves now, but I'll be very interested to see what happens from here on out with that situation in Alabama.